Jó napot kívánok! Uh, greetings to all. I'm Géza Tényi. May I also uh, introduce my colleague? Uh, I came as a lawyer to this conference, as an expert in legal matters, and it is about uh, cloud computing, uh, the uh, legal aspects of cloud computing, uh, confidential information uh, handling, of about which I would like to uh, say a few words to you. So before entering the details of the uh, legal uh, elements, I would like to say a few words about a book that is uh, probably well known to uh, part of the participants. Uh, it had a, made a major impact on me, and I, uh, it changed my attitude to law. It's Lawrence Lessing's The Codeless Law, uh, which was uh, uh, the second edition was published in 2006 and that uh, interprets uh, uh, what he calls cyberspace, uh, this virtual world, and uh, its uh, control, its uh, operations, and the uh, computer controls and uh, commands that are behind, comparing it to uh, legal uh, commands in the apparent world, in the real world. So we can compare these two uh, uh, life settings, like spheres, which are there, uh, where uh, our uh, life and the, the economy is uh, uh, taking place and the performing. And in this uh, uh, comparison, he also concludes that a legal provision, as it is invented by man, uh, its interpreting uh, can also take various forms and can uh, give rise to various uh, disputes and ar arguments. Then, an information, uh, on the other hand, an information system, which is working and uh, co uh, controlled by codes, uh, uh, cannot uh, repeat uh, or produce the same problems of uh, operation, which is a very interesting question from a legal point of view, if we look at uh, this uh, standpoint, uh, namely that, uh, 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 that what are the set of norms uh, regulating our lives, uh, and then we can see that these different systems of, uh, of standards, of norms uh, in the cyberspace uh, may, uh, uh, by interpreting these codes, they interrelate, uh, and, uh, uh, which is an, uh, either interrelated on an equal footing or one subordinated to the other. And uh, at least from a, a lawyer's uh, point of view, uh, to consider that one uh, uh, IT uh, environment uh, gives what kind of opportunity for action uh, can be much more limited than in a legal uh, framework where, of course, you have a much larger space for interpretation and application. And uh, uh, so that, that is, uh, if you compare the legal uh, uh, settings and the uh, application of the codes. Now, of course, as I just mentioned, these uh, systems are interrelated, uh, having an impact on each other. And of course, even uh, the uh, legislator has to be aware of some technical information concerning uh, IT, uh, then uh, should consider these as, uh, as a higher code in uh, creating all these uh, systems. There can be some uh, prohibitions there included in various forms, uh, but also some incentives, uh, incentive rules combined with prohibitions that will somehow favor some uh, kind kind of a contact, uh, uh, conduct to be followed. Now, if we consider this uh, way of thinking, uh, uh, which uh, is reflected in this uh, uh, publication, if we now apply that to cloud computing, then uh, a basic question for a legal expert, for a lawyer, that whether the code system, the uh, command system uh, embedded in that IT system that is uh, in, uh, available in cloud computing, uh, what kind of uh, uh, legal opinion should be uh, based on that? Uh, should uh, how can it uh, be conformed to that uh, set of codes uh, that we uh, we learned in our studies? Now this question uh, is uh, coming up in various aspects because we very well know 
uh, those phenomena uh, where uh, are not covered uh, by the uh, legal instruments, uh, then of course uh, such uh, uh, legal instruments like, for example, contracts uh, or other uh, instructions that will have to be used and which are much closer, which will bring uh, the legal uh, system, legal uh, regulation closer to the uh, existing uh, IT uh, world now. Uh, it was, of course, a very abstract uh, uh, consideration that I, I just uh, mentioned. If we consider a, legal, a lawyer cabinet as a, a, produ a production unit uh, with all the inputs and outputs, we can conclude that there is, of course, an overall data uh, processing element that, uh, that, of course, in each of the uh, lawyer cabinets, we are dealing with confidential business, uh, confidential data, which are classified data. And for this reason, uh, of course, uh, the uh, the major obligation is the obligation of secrecy. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, will have to be respected in all of the uh, analogous and, uh, inf uh, and uh, electronic and informatic systems that we have. And of course, we are uh, obliged to, um, uh, to record, maintain data. This is a high degree of uh, responsibility uh, towards our clients. I would also uh, come to talk about that at a later stage. On the other hand, uh, it is also our chamber of, uh, lawyer, of, of, uh, of lawyers uh, uh, also uh, uh, give such uh, regulations uh, and recommendations uh, to us uh, when it comes to uh, IT security and, uh, and this activity in the chamber of, uh, of, of lawyers in Budapest has uh, become a major concern. Uh, trying to uh, uh, to push uh, to to to, co to convince lawyers to take this uh, more and more into consideration, but some of the lawyers, of course, uh, short of sufficient knowledge, uh, are only draining behind to cope with this. Uh, and this is uh, also somehow part of the uh, uh, curve of development of our own cabinet that, uh, uh, that there is a, a, a lawyer cabinet uh, started with two lawyers and then we see, yes, that uh, financially this is worthwhile, it's uh, viable, it starts uh, on, a, uh, uh, on a growing uh, path and then we can also employ some new uh, colleagues uh, to, to work with us. Uh, then after a while what we see that as our clients represent uh, quite a wide uh, 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 range uh, as to uh, individuals or geographical coverage. So then our uh, own uh, tools should be mobile tools to be able to cover all these. Then also there is the, the other phenomenon, namely that the colleagues who already have acquired some experiences, they will bring their own appliances. Uh, 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 of course, uh, uh, together to go with our uh, lawyer diploma, we do not have any additional element in that area. So we are faced with the fact that uh, we have to uh, integrate a, 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 a tool, uh, a device in our work that we do not know the exact uh, details, uh, the, the rules by which they have to be used. And it is only by, uh, 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 and when we reach a certain level, we have uh, we are about f four to six staff in the uh, in the cabinet. Then uh, we should have our own uh, IT network inside, with some access uh, authorization. Uh, as I say, there is a uh, curve of uh, uh, expansion uh, for a successful uh, legal office, legal cabinet, and uh, this. Uh, 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 profession uh, forced us in 2010 to make a decision, either to uh, uh, to make us an investment to buy a server uh, and install one, or uh, uh, at that time, uh, what uh, the, a new uh, it was a cloud computing service, which was just about to be uh, present at that time that we could opt for. It very important that when akkor amikor ez az igény felmerült a számunkra sokkal inkább a munkafolyamati ellenőrzés, a munkafolyamati hatékonyság lebegett a szemünk előtt. Az adatvédelem is megjelent, mint szempont, de ez nem az elsőrendű szempontok között. Ez ugyanakkor magának a konkrét modellnek a kialakításában játszott szerepet. Itt átadnám a kollégának a szót, aki magának az egész környezetnek... ...about the legal background of this whole environment and with the legal... The legal implications. 
Ez m- a jogi megközelítések. Sokan sok mindent mondtak már a felőről, és általában, ha jogi oldalról nézzük a, a dolgot, akkor általában az adatvédelmi jogi kérdések kerülnek elő. És itt merülnek Come to grips with is data protection, because this raises the biggest problems. And let me highlight some of the aspects of this approach and outline a sort of approach that may help. <coughs> apply this stance in, the, in, your, in your day life if you are going to use uh, cloud services. Let me start with an international outlook. As you may have seen or may see from this list, this topic has been internationally well discussed. Also the legal side of cloud usage from the simplest data protection approaches upwards. Work Group 29 has a, a described opinion about the utilization of, of, of clouds. But you find the same approach in tele, on the telecom side, in financial institutions, and also in IT security. Where you, have, where you find a lot of various approaches. You may note uh, fundamental conflicts depending on whether clouds are considered from a European uh, perspective or from the USA, where most of the uh, service providers are situated. The problem being that uh, there are two totally diagonally opposite approaches to what is considered to be private sphere and how it should be protected. The, most of the data protection documents that has, have been mentioned before analyze from a European standpoint all data protection issues and cause attention to the, to the risks. There are fundamentally three such core components. First of all, it raises the concern about uh, anybody using a cloud service does needs use control uh, over his data because he has only restricted knowledge about the way the service provider ha handles his data and even where these data are handled is unknown to the user. Also, access to these data is also a concern for most companies. Also, the cloud is considered as a, uh, an area where the same protection must be provided as in non-cloud environments. The core component around which this whole thing is focused is the aspect of of transparency. The service provider's operations and conditions must be transparent, or so the requirement goes. And when the user uses uh, the service, it is actually a, 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 a decision that involves confidence in the ISP, in, in the service provider. Now, how can the service provider make its services transparent? And how can it make using a cloud less risky from the point of view of the customer? <laughs> the <clears throat> conflicts arise from the two possible approaches to the issue. 
<coughs> the European community developed a uh, solution method In, that, that would allow it to be to, to guarantee to, to to get guarantees from U.S.-based uh, uh, service providers. This is incorporated in the safe harbor agreements. All U.S.-based companies may join this uh, safe harbor agreement. Uh, guaranteeing that these uh, participants are, comply with European standards. In Europe, the fact that a provider proves to be compliant with safe harbor provisions is not enough in itself. The service provider is expected to provide more. The US approach says, if I have uh, join the safe harbor agreement, then this in itself proves that I comply with European uh, legislation and allows me to provide services. The prison scandal, uh, among others, <coughs> threw the limelight on the concern that some service providers uh, state that themselves that they are that they comply with European uh, requirements and still uh, clouds, uh, data that they have stored in, in, in a cloud could be penetrated and accessed by unauthorized parties. Most people may not have noticed that in the safe, that the safe harbor agreement does include a provision that law may make exceptions and all European Legislations know about this from the German through the British to the Hungarian. And it says that safe harbor agreements and data protection agreements may be overwritten by national security concerns. Obviously, it's a question in how much this corresponds to the Constitution and its provisions. If I provide cl cloud services for a major organization like a bank. That bank is in a sufficiently strong position to force the cloud provider to provide the services at a, at, at, at a specific at specific conditions and protect itself against that provider's defaults. However, if I'm a natural person using a cloud service, I have by far less bargaining power and I'll be forced to accept the service as is because it's obviously because it is free. And let me refer back to a presentation we heard this morning. <clears throat> this uh, free service comes at a price because the price is our own private data that are being used and sold by the service provider. And we should find a, an equilibrium here between uh, uh, interests and the protection of uh, and, and, and privacy protection and, and, and data protection. The possible solution would be to uh, to bring these two systems closer together, to harmonize, to try to trying to harmonize these two sets of requirements. <clears throat> The fears listed by the European approach should be uh, dispelled by a, a, an atmosphere of trust. The question is whether this should be done by the legislator or by the parties themselves mutually regulated in contracts. In Hungary, surprisingly, There is one single piece of official uh, declaration about utilization of cloud services, and it is a financial statement. And this has not yet been even accepted. The National Data Protection Authority has not issued any, uh, any help uh, uh, about how they 
would inspect principles adhered to in the case of uh, cloud services, we can only guess, and we can only guess because there are two general pieces of legislation that need to be uh, applied. One is the information, law and information, and maybe perhaps also the uh, sector-specific legislation that may be in place, but these do not provide a, a good enough answer for the conditions the service providers should ensure and for uh, protecting the data protection rights of the user. Obviously, uh, the contracting parties are not necessarily uh, at the same level in terms of bargaining force. <coughs> So whether, while it is said that the, the contract can provide the guarantees needed, it is still a question what legal solutions are available that are able to provide sufficient guarantees. In Hungary, it is also another, it is a problem that there is a, uh, uh, the, the information, the law and information and the sectoral laws conflict because the new data protection law has been passed in 2011 uh, in the frenzy of uh, revolutionary legislation, and they simply forgot to adjust sectoral legislation to this new law. So the, the uh, concept of, the, of, of data processor as an entity has been slapped on to the existing legislation later on. If I, as a data processor, uh, tell the service provider to process these data, then the way this uh, 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 provider uh, contracts other parties to achieve this, uh, the question is whether I need to be involved in, in uh, in these contracts of the service provider with other parties. So the law has not cl clearly defined the legal foundations. Information secu uh, security and data connection linkage is still uh, uh, at the level of the 80s, 1980s, 90s. So this law is not up to current requirements to be polite and is practically unusable for cloud services. The second uh, set of problems is the issue of contracts. These contracts promise many things. Please do the, to take the trouble to read Google's uh, general uh, terms and conditions for uh, cloud services. There are beautiful promises in there. However, you won't find any guarantee uh, given to natural persons. I can even cite an, examples, an example. Sometimes Google does not provide such guarantees even to uh, heavy, more heavyweight part, uh, partners like a bank even. We sh should be able to find data protection uh, provisions in these uh, uh, terms and conditions, and they should be added by Google out of its own free will. Uh, these are practically uh, private agreements between the parties uh, and assume that the parties are uh, equal as parties and have the same bargaining, are in the same bargaining position, and accordingly, their responsibilities can also be set in paper. I can only mention Google's example. They promise the world to you, but any responsibility is explicitly excluded. Google's responsibility is excluded. And if I, as a Hungarian private person, enter into a contract with a, with a, with a US-based service provider, 
then this uh, uh, relationship, legal relationship between us includes an international element, so international private uh, uh, laws for private persons should be applied. And this means that these, uh, that certain private uh, uh, <coughs> law conditions must be met wherever the parties are. <coughs> so the question is whether, whether data protection should also be included here. Well, after showing you the legal environment, let's get back to the situation. We have a uh, an attorney's office uh, handling a lot of sensitive data during his daily work. So what requirements, what problems do you find in such an environment? A little in reflection to what my colleague just told you, in European and continental and uh, British law, you in, 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 in continental law, data Entry is already required. Certain conditions have met to have been met. While in British law, uh, uh, requirements are uh, mostly uh, uh, provided for the actual handling of data after they have been entered. The other thing is that in continental thinking, if a major organization uh, uh, provides services for a uh, uh, a business or a private person, they are obviously not equal in bargaining position in power. So this in equilibrium should have should be reset to equal by legislation, but this has not yet been actually done yet, especially not in cloud services. Just two sentences about why we deal. We are citing this example of, a, of an attorney's office. Apart, the, apart from the fact that we ourselves are attorneys, we believe that per, the handling of data, personal data, is done not only by by attorneys but also in many other areas. So what we are discussing here uh, should be important for also those parties that are not attorneys' offices and still handle private data. <coughs> Without naming the service that we are currently using as an office, as an authority's office. When uh, we reviewed the tasks uh, that needed to be solved, we found <laughs> that we are not even competent to handle the introduction, the, uh, the rolling out of the service at the uh, at the office. We had to do some a bit of learning before we could use the interfaces and we could and, and could evaluate and use the services we we uh, received. So when we talk about a sectoral cloud service with data with, with the handling of private data, then uh, these should be implemented without requiring users, mostly lay users, to have an understanding of the service they are using. Uh, uh, at least they should not be required to have IT knowledge. However, while uh, this user interface is being designed for a specific party for us, like uh, for instance, it is important to have some sort of IT knowledge to be able to specify the user interface that we'd like to see also uh, uh, well, access rights to various uh, parts of data, various types of data is general for all organizations. There are only ba three basic categories. I can access data and can change them. I can access them and only read them, or I can't access them at all. This requires documents to be uh, broken down into uh, in these three areas, but I haven't seen any solution for that yet. Also, there are data contents that are that should be provided heavy protection. Data that uh, is meant only for a specific attorney and not at anybody else. So this type of data labeling or uh, uh, qualification is also an unsolved problem. All we see is information, data storage, and work organization, but not this type of uh, 
of the confidentiality breakdown. Also, as we are not IT specialists from time to time, Uh, we do need to provide, to, to create physical backups, and not everybody has uh, IT acquaintances. Well, actually, we managed to solve this. But for instance, restoring earlier data is still a problem, and the service itself, uh, we haven't seen any uh, service yet that extended to uh, uh, that would have provided a turnkey solution for encryption and key management. From the point of view of attorneys, it's also important to provide archiving and data pres preservation, and also the guarantees the service provider can uh, give us. For instance, in the case of data migration, guarantees that our pre data will, in fact, be deleted from the area they used to be stored in. <laughs> what is important is the uh, also the, authentic the issue of authentication. Uh, 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 company registry data, for instance, uh, need to be certified. We have not, we have yet to see a service provider that uh, offers electronic archiving services in addition to uh, cloud services. And there is a uh, certification and data checking system that you see listed in the last row. It, hung, it is right in Hungary. It's also very incomplete. Uh, if I had to uh, describe an ideal service for a, uh, uh, an attorney's office, then all the issues listed here should be incorporated as offerings uh, and would and, and should enable us to, to hire a new person to the attorney's office and have him working uh, efficiently by the end of the day without having to uh, uh, go through a course. Finally, uh, as a conclusion, <clears throat> uh, maybe come back uh, while uh, for the uh, paradigm of the lexic code. We think, then, uh, at least uh, from a lawyer's uh, point of view, this is a very clear example that the uh, system of coding that we use as uh, uh, legal experts and uh, those which are at the basis of the IT systems, they can somehow uh, uh, compensate each other and they're complementary to each other. And over the last uh, four or five years, there have been uh, plenty of initiatives from various working groups and uh, uh, research groups, uh, uh, by, uh, which is uh, identified by privacy design. Privacy design is not necessarily handling of uh, classified information. It's basically a solution uh, to comply with the data protection provisions uh, in, the, in their basic uh, uh, area. Uh, from our uh, point of view, this uh, basically meant that uh, uh, that uh, uh, we should uh, comply with the requirements of the sector of the economy that is handling classified information, and, and that whereby we can also contribute to uh, the, the protection of these uh, uh, data. And of course, for that purpose, some more product development will be necessary. Another basic requirement uh, is on the part of the a client, either a private person or a company, that there should be a thorough a risk assessment before any kind of a uh, contact is made with a service provider. What kind of data are processed? Uh, what are the processes that could be accelerated, facilitated, made more cost efficient if this were uh, completed, uh, done by uh, uh, cloud computing? services and what are the degree uh, what is the degree of risk taking uh, for the client uh, once uh, he will uh, lose complete control over these data let it be a concrete loss uh, uh, complaint from the client or if uh, uh, this could happen what would be the negative impact on the in the media on that now once uh, this, coast, uh, this risk analysis uh, has been completed, will have been completed, then uh, one has to, um, to consider the conditions uh, of the service providers on the market. We have to uh, study thoroughly not only the various technical solutions, but also 
if uh, required, uh, we should hire a legal uh, expert to uh, have a closer look at uh, the, these uh, various organizations or private persons who will handle these data if uh, they, uh, this, uh, they can provide sufficient guarantees in the co uh, uh, contractually. Uh, or if we can, uh, if one, one can uh, modify or fine tune these contractual obligations, and uh, we can offer a checklist for that. Uh, basically, uh, what we have to uh, consider: what are the data that we want uh, that will be handled? What is the degree of protection uh, uh, for those data? What are the damages that can be caused to us? And compared to that, on the contractual basis, what are, is the responsibility, the liability taken by the service provider? And in, when it comes to a question of uh, data handling, data processing, data control, uh, uh, how can we supervise and audit the, these processes? Uh, what are the solutions that are offered by the service provider for the protection of information? And if there should be any incident to handle that incident, uh, uh, what is the information uh, made available to us on those? And as my colleague just mentioned, uh, uh, what we have to look at uh, basically is that whether the contract uh, offers us sufficient uh, data protection guarantees, uh, whether these privacy by design elements are integrated into that contract, and that on that base, it is on that basis that we can then conclude that, we, uh, that having examined all these matters, we uh, can t uh, adopt a responsible uh, decision and that we can uh, uh, rely, uh, that we can uh, 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 hand over these services and we can, uh, uh, and that's how this mutual trust uh, can uh, be constructed, can be developed, because all this uh, uh, service provision is basically a matter of trust. Thank you for your attention and patience. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, we are, uh, you can reach us at the uh, email address at the end of, uh, of our the document uh, lecture.